Welcome back to our beginner guide. Enjoy. So while we have a little bit of time, we have our pierogies, which I think is enough. We have ourselves a healing styles, which hopefully is enough. But if we are able to make more, why not make more, right? Unfortunately, we are really low on veggies right now. We can, however, use our cactus, but we want to keep that for our sanity. We have two days until the deer cloth shows up on day 29. I want to begin to, to get ourselves ready to go. So we're going to make sure that we have our armor. We're going to equip a lot of stuff and drop a lot of stuff from our inventory. So for while the night goes, let's spend some time and just make our base look a little bit nicer. So let's take our rot. Uh, we're going to have that in our inventory. But before we get too further, remember I talked about a very crucial and very important item in the game, and that is called a flingomatic. Now that we have our gold, and now that we have our rocks, and now that we have things that are very important, we're going to make ourselves a flingomatic. So before you do this, before you copy me, grab yourself 15 ice from your from your fridge, put it in your inventory, make sure you have a little bit of rocks, make sure you have a lot of gold, and make yourself two cut stone, and you're going to make yourself two electric doodads. You're going to scroll down on your list. You're going to look for the gears that were, that we left in our chest as well, too. We also got one from... We also got one from when we were in the caves, or I mean, sorry, in the graves. And we're going to scroll down and make ourselves an ice flingomatic. Now, before the ice flingomatic goes down, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you get ready really fast because you want to be able to place this in an area where it's going to cover all of your crops and most of your base. Unfortunately, in this case, uh, we are kind of in the in the decision-making form of where to place it. So unfortunately, don't starve together. As you can see, there is space in between here, but don't starve together is very, very picky um, and doesn't let you place it there for obvious reasons of animation forming. So you're, we're kind of limited to where we want to place it. But with everything that we have, we're going to manage to make two of these. So to start out, I'm going to actually place one on this side. And then when I place one over here, um, it should pick up the rest of them. And we might have to move our berries over accordingly, which is, to be honest with you, it's okay. We might also have to uh, move our uh, we might also have to remove our uh, chest and stuff but for the time being though I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place it down in the middle here so it covers pretty much uh, you know most of the base and then we can kind of move things over accordingly so now that the flingomatic is down we're turning it off immediately because it's gonna put out any fires that are around which obviously your campfire will go out and I probably shouldn't be holding my miner hat in my head <laughs> um, so there you go. So now we have a flingomatic. Very, very, very important. You don't have to jump the gun and make one right now, but we have a little bit of downtime, so why not make one? Why not use the resources so that way, if we absolutely forget about it, we can, we'll, you know, we'll thank ourselves later on. Now, I mentioned before that we still have a little bit of extra time, so why don't we make another one? And, uh, and that way we have it ready to go for when we want to move some stuff around in the base. So once again, we have enough rocks, and we have even more rocks left over, which is great. So let's fill up our rock collection, make ourselves two more cut stone, finish off the gold that we don't need to have uh, anymore. And I think we still had a little bit of extra ice in here, which on both of them, yes, we do. Uh, and we're going to make ourselves another flingomatic. So bam, we have ourselves the second flingomatic. So when we come back in the future, uh, we already have a pre-made ready to go. We just got to figure out where we want to place it for our crops. Um, and we're going to also make ourselves an even Im another important. So grab a little bit more gold. If you have any left over, that's good. If you don't, that's okay too. And something that was very, that was on the list there above the flingomatic is a lightning rod. Now, <clears throat> this is a little bit early to get yourself a lightning rod, but it is very crucial. So we might as well do it while we have a little bit of time. Placing the lightning rod down will now protect your base from lightning strikes. So instead of lightning hitting, for example, you or your tent and setting it on fire, it'll now hit the lightning rod uh, come springtime. So perfect. Uh, and now we can spend uh, the next morning uh, continuing on our crops uh, and a few other things. Now it's here we go. Day 29, the day before the deer clops. Don't get super worried. Let's spend some time. May as well, you know, fertilize our crops while we're here. We don't necessarily need to focus on anything else. Uh, just kind of focus on making sure that we have all the resources that we need um, before this boss fight starts. So we're planting our crops. So that, that way, if we do decide to move it so we can make room for the flingomatic, we're ready to go. Uh, and then we'll spend a little bit more time planting a few more trees. 
And that's why it's always good to have a little bit of downtime. Now, keep in mind, after we fight the Deer Clops, we will have even more downtime as well, too. Um, now, if you're using the mod, uh, which is known as a Show Me mod, you see this little, like, white line on the outside as well, too. Now, what is that white line? That's indicating the line of the Lightning Rod and how far the Lightning Rod is going to protect. So it's a very crucial mod to have that'll kind of tell you, um, you know, a little bit more about how far you have until you're outside of that lightning range uh, area. So we'll continue to plant our trees because we have a little bit of time here to kill um, before we decide to either run away or attack the deer clumps. But we are going to show you how to attack it. Now, keep in mind, if you decide, okay, I don't feel like fighting a boss, I really don't want to, why are we spending all this time leading up? It's still crucial to get yourself ready for such a fight, because you never know if you're going to be in a position where you're going to need um, this type of, you know, whether it be healing or this type of um, protecting yourselves from, like, the hounds, for example. It's just very important to kind of get yourself used to this situation, because the Deer Clops, to be honest, is one of those bosses that will not take any mercy on your base and will almost spend its entire time just you know trying to destroy what you spent this entire time building so our bird is happy we have extra we have extra food if we need it um and we also need to maybe get ourselves a little bit um a little bit more ice but before that because we don't want to spend the last day doing that we don't want to forget anything we want to go through our checklist it's time to cook the cactus so as I mentioned before, cooking the cactus, why is it so important? What makes it so different? Obviously in the first few videos, we kind of talked about that and why cactus is so useful because after cooking it, it gives you the best sanity and don't starve together uh, for a single use item aside from the, the green caps. And there it is, plus 15 sanity. So we take a bunch of those. That'll ref If we take exactly, for example, 10, uh, you're going to have yourself back on full sanity gain and we can keep that in inventory for tomorrow. So we have our checklist Cactus, checklist, a pierogies, checklist, healing salves, pan fluid in case we're in emergencies, and of course our living, uh, our life-giving Amy if we absolutely need it as well too. We have our log suit over there. We have everything we need. Uh, we just need to wait until day 30. So now that we have a little bit more time on our hands, let's go ahead and get ourselves some, get ourselves some twigs, spend some time picking up some extra resources, um, and we're going to spend most of the day early uh at nighttime if we can if we have enough uh fireflies left if you have a lo enough stuff left in your uh lanterns uh you can go ahead and <clears throat> in your minor hat story you can go ahead and venture around to see if you can find any more any more carrots so i'm gonna go do that as well too just go look around to see if i can find any carrots uh here we go remember that we i completely even forgot that we set these these little traps down uh, but we uh we see this is why it's so this is why it's so good because we planted our our traps for the bunnies we forgot that they were there and now we're walking around with extra meat in our hands and we don't even have to worry about uh having and fighting spiders for example so continuing to look around for more carrots you know, let's i don't know if this is probably the not the best area especially at nighttime so we'll, let's just look around the edges see if we can find any more carrots see if we can find any more ice maybe we can add a few more carrots uh to our pierogi uh make sure and get ourselves you know possibly 10. i would ideally like uh especially for for beginners i would probably promote getting yourself maybe 10 to 15 pierogies but considering we already have those healing salves i don't think we necessarily need them but the more the better for sure you know the more you can have for healing the better it's going to be uh and you're going to want to make sure that you have as much as you can especially in this sort of fight but for me uh because i'm I'm playing with me and kiri i don't think we're gonna need to have more than that but at least for myself anyways uh i'm gonna for the sake of the tutorial i'm gonna try to make ourselves some more so this is why once again leaving the carrots is very important very useful um and you don't want to eat all the carrots unless you absolutely have to berries on the other hand though you could have eaten as many of those as you like because they're going to continue to grow and get you more and look at that we have even another little area with some leftover gears in case we need to so we have ourselves an extra 10 extra 10 or so carrots we'll leave the rest on the ground because we want to make sure that we leave some for the future just in case we need more pierogies and we're just on the last night before the deer clops when day 30 hits two things are going to happen on day 30 um dusk is going to hit and you might hear 
you might begin to hear the deer clops uh, making a loud breathing noise as night is about to hit uh, or you might it might completely skip over to where it hits on day 31 and then on day 31 night you begin to hear it but the day 31 is very rare and generally does not happen so don't really take take it kind of with a grain of salt because it's not really it's not really something that happens very often so once again cook up the meat and you don't necessarily have to have monster meat to cook up in order to transfer it into eggs it can be any meat it can be even frog legs it doesn't matter now your bird is asleep at night time but hurry up burn i need you to i need you to wake up and and make me some eggs most people at night time will stand next to their bird and not know what to do at night time hold your bird in your hand it'll go in your inventory quickly place it inside back inside and quickly feed it as fast as you can as fast as you can before it falls back to sleep. Your bird will have a few seconds before it triggers uh, sleep mode again and do it again. And there you go. So if it's nighttime and you're standing next to your bird and you're wishing that it was awake, you can force it back awake by quickly grabbing it and putting your inventory, put it back in. And if you're fast with your, uh, if you're fast with your fingers, you're managed to get yourself some eggs at nighttime. So bam. So let's get ourselves some more pierogies here. Uh, let's make ourselves another handful if we can. And we're doing extremely well uh, getting ourselves prepped and ready uh, for the next fight. So this time I am going to use all the resources we have because we're, def we're definitely going to need it. Uh, so for now, instead of using meatballs and such, I'm just going to stick to just sticking with seeds and make us and just eat as many leftover seeds. If you might have got some from the ground, eat those rather than eating meatballs because we need as much meat as we can to get ourselves uh, the pierogies that we need for healing. So when this is all over, we're going to have ourselves... Uh, looks like 12 pierogies total, which is more than enough healing. Uh, we still have extra leftover things, and unfortunately, our old hand bat is beginning to spoil. And as you can see, it's officially spoiled. 46 damage instead of the 56.2. So that's why having that extra, having that extra hand bat is so essential uh, to fighting. Uh, and here we go. So we're on, we're on day 30 in a few seconds here with just enough of what we need. And let's make sure that we. See if we need anything extra here. Looks like everything else is ready to go. We don't need to have any extra gold. Uh, we have, we're have. we going to bring over some extra rope in case we need to make ourselves some extra armor. Um, and I think we're ready to go for the, for the deer clops fight. So once again, don't necessarily eat your cooked cactus unless you need to. You can start by doing that right away but when the fight starts your your sanity is going to drain so fast when fighting the deer clops that you're going to need to have that sanity and be able to hold yourself over the threshold of at least a uh, half wave so when you're fighting the deer clops the deer clops is going to drain your sanity so quick that it's going to get down to almost like what's i mentioned before it's going to get down to zero so you don't want to be using your cactus right away but instead keeping your sanity almost at half when your sanity is at a certain percentage uh shadow creatures will not bother to follow you so rather than eating them in a full-blown bite you're going to want to maintain your sanity at a certain th at a certain threshold so we're going to run back here make sure that we have everything that we need in here we have extra we have extra rope we have extra logs we have extra log suits now we're going to take those log suits we're going to put them in our inventory and we're going to leave extra ones just in, in case our part our uh our friend needs them and we're going to take our stuff that we don't need we don't need our shovel we don't need our axe we don't need our flinch we've already pre-made our fire pits we have everything we need. Let's put our flint away. Let's put our, our uh, hammer away. Uh, keeping your twigs and, and some rocks on you is okay. Let's take take our life-giving Amy. Let's put that, that down on the floor. Actually, you know what? Let's keep our life-giving Amy in our pocket just in case. We have our pierogi in our second spot. We have our cactus here. Uh, we have our walking cane in our hand, which if you don't have one, that's okay as well too. And we have our pan flute as well too. So now... We're going to leave our backpack behind. And now we have an, an empty slot in our inventory, which means another log suit. So let's take ourselves another. So now we have, we should have, you know, multiple log suits. If you still have your leftover helmet from before as well too, that's okay. We have our hand bat. So we can press the number one key on our keyboard to easily, easily swap back between. So when the deer clops decides to attack us, uh, we're going to be moving fast with our walking cane. If you don't have a walking cane, that is okay as well too. You now have a hand bat. Uh, you can still walk semi quickly. And I'm going to show you hopefully uh, very shortly how it is to fight the deer clops. So now that we have everything in our inventory, um, you know, let's let's spice up that. Uh, stay next to a nice warm campfire. 
nice warm campfire as we get nice and toasty and get ready for the fight. Um, and just before we know it, it's already beginning to get dusk. So Kiri is just finishing up making a few more things and then it's just waiting until nighttime and then we're going to get everybody out of the base and then that way remember guys if you're inside of the base when the deer cloth shows up the deer cloths will automatically assume uh to go to the, the the first structure available so that's why we want to make sure that we have nobody there and that way we're around our a little attacking area uh, before it starts but we still have a lot of time before that, that so that's not a problem so even if you wanted to wait a little bit later you can but now that we have everything that we need uh let's go and uh let, I, we did mention that we had a few we had a few of our leftover clockworks out are still over here so let's finish off the clockworks let's uh take them on real fast so we can so we can kill them real quick uh now he kept, hitting the knights is easy you can basically just hit them twice and then they'll they'll retaliate by back by trying to hit you and then you can get close enough luckily you can get a few hits in uh if you know they're not they don't hit too too hard so i don't really worry about them too much but i don't really want to use too much of my armor if i don't have to um ideally you know if you had uh, if you had a stronger character like Wolfgang, it wouldn't be, it would be obviously be less hits. Or if you had uh, Weak Freight as well too. So let's take those gears. Um, let's bring them over here. So then that way, next time when we decide to make a bigger fridge area, we'll have extra gears left over. So we should have a few extra spots uh, inside of. There we go. So now we have once again everything here. Uh, we have our backpack. Now when the deer club shows up, it's going to appear and it might they might attack a few of these things, which is okay. But it's not necessarily going to catch anything on fire uh, or anything like that. Now, few weapons to avoid using while fighting the deer clops. I would try to avoid using a basic spear if you can help it. If you have a, a basic spear, that's okay. It's just going to take you a lot longer to attack. I would try to avoid using a torch. You should never attack bosses or enemies or anything for that matter using a torch. It's just one of those rules that if you use a torch obviously it's going to promote everything else around you burning up um and of course you don't want to use any basic tools unless you absolutely have to if you're in a situation where you need to fight something use an axe if you absolutely absolutely have to and you have nothing else available um but overall yes definitely always make sure that you try to avoid using uh using a torch so as the night comes we're waiting uh we're gonna we'll listen and hopefully hear the loud breathing noise um if you want before the fight starts you can fill up your sanity because why not do it now than later but ideally i would uh, I much prefer using the tent if you can but once again you're going to be outside of uh, the base so it's probably not necessarily a good idea to be using that so let's fill up our sanity a little bit get ourselves nice to 100 percent. we now have enough to keep ourselves um somewhat at least on the bar of where our sanity needs to be i know this I know this tutorial is going to be a little bit longer, but I don't necessarily want to just jump out and, and go to our next video just yet because I know that the suspense is probably killing you and how we're going to survive this and how we're going to stay alive. So if you're playing solo, it's going to be a little bit tricky. If you're playing with a friend, it's going to be a little bit easier, but you have everything you need, hopefully. If you don't, uh, at least it's going to be a lesson that you can continue to try to continue learning um, as you get through winter time. And it will get easier. And trust me, after the deer clops, um, is over and done with it's just going to get easier and easier and easier um, continuing on trying to kill the deer clouds but it's just time and effort uh, when it comes to fighting bosses so we don't hear the vo we don't hear the growling just yet so we can continue to kind of if you want to walk around and explore and see if there's anything close to you i managed to grab myself a little blue mushroom so let's go ahead and cook that up now blue mushrooms will give you healing just eating by themselves but if you cook up blue mushrooms they will give you sanity so that's what i'm doing uh in order to get myself a little bit extra sanity just to kind of top it up a little bit so if you have if you want to wait for the deer clops you can but i would not suggest going near your base uh while day 30 approaches because it's probably one of the worst things you can do if you don't want your whole base to get destroyed <laughs> so we have our armor we have our cactus we have our pierogies we have our our walking cane we're pretty much ready to go. We're just now can hear the breathing. I'll let you listen. So that breathing will indicate that the deer clops is now hunting you and it'll begin to get deeper and louder. And there it is. There's the deer clops. All right. So as the deer clops comes through it's going to release a nice attack so before we even attack i'm going to show you the attack patterns real fast i'm going to for the sake of the tutorial equip my minor hat as i show you exactly how to attack it so you're by yourself what do you do and don't serve together you can a use your walking cane and decide to run away um, but however it will find you and decide to attack your uh decide to attack your structures but 
for the sake of the tutorial, you can see the Deerclops has a charge attack where it, it releases a bunch of ice. Now, best way to avoid this attack, you can notice that your sanity is continuing to go down. Your sanity will drop the closer you get to the Deerclops, as you can tell. And so here is the way to kill the Deerclops. Professionally, uh, you don't necessarily need to kite the Deerclops. If you have more than one person on your server, you can definitely tank it up. But for the sake of the, the tutorial, I'm going to show you an easy way on fighting against the Deerclops. So here we go. Deerclops ice attack is what his weakness is. So boom, ice attack goes in. You run in for a quick two hits. Without making it too obvious, you run away. And then you run back in again. Boom, 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 boom. I would do two to four hits if you're able to. And now, this is where the walking cane gets super helpful. You equip the walking cane using your number one key, and you unequip it, uh, so that way you're able to equip your, your uh, hand bat. And then, once again, if you have help, it is help, it is easier uh, to have somebody help you through the server. If you get hit or if you get hit a few times, it's okay as well, too. But keep in mind, the Deerclops is one of those characters that you're going to want to make sure that you either attack by yourself or your friend knows the kiting pattern, just like Kiri and I do uh, right now. So Deerclops, more people attacking it, tends to be a little bit harder, just like the Barrager, because it interrupts your attack pattern and also promotes it um, to attack and freeze you in a different form. So... That is the Deerclops. Now, if the Deerclops is in your base for some odd reason and smashing things up, go up to the Deerclops, attack it once, force it to go out of your base, and you'll be good to go. Um, but this is all it takes. Now, if you're finding yourself in a position where, what do I do? I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to kite it. You can stand next to it and attack. I don't promote doing this, um, but as everybody knows me, I like to just tank it up. And the Deerclops is one of those easiest characters to do that. And look at that. We never even used one of our pierogies. Now, I might have made that look extremely easy. Um, and you might have been sitting there going, well, I died to it right away. Now, if you go back and you watch it, hopefully in somewhat of a slow motion, uh, or you're able to kind of watch as the kiting pattern begins, you're going to be able to tell that it just gets easier uh, with time in order to do it. So just remember that uh, when you're fighting the Deerclops, just try to take your time, try to learn the kiting pattern if you can, um, and try to make sure that just overall, don't worry about dying to it because you are, you're going to have ways to, to be revived. And you're going to have ways to, um, you're going to have ways to, you know, keep trying and trying and trying. But there, there it is. There is the Deerclops. Now the Deerclops drops the best item in the game, uh, in my opinion, and that is an, a Deerclops eyeball, which will then be used for something even more special later on. So once again, we're going to drop our armor off because we don't need it anymore. Uh, and we're going to grab all of our resources that we left in here, even including we're going to grab the rope. Let's even leave our life keeping Amy over here so we know that we have it for the future. And let's continue to run back home where we have su now successfully killed the Deerclops. So if you're fighting the Deerclops and you're with mo more than one person, I will suggest if you absolutely need to, you can definitely uh, tank up the Deerclops as long as you be make sure that you f heal yourself periodically. But if you're learning, the if you want to learn the kiting patterns, you can do what I did before, uh, where if you follow those instructions, you you're managed to avoid the Deerclops hit uh, and hopefully survive as well too. But there you go, guys. There's the Deerclops fight. We finally did it. Day 30. Hopefully you, you survived. If you didn't and you need any t sort of tips whatsoever, feel free uh, to message me on, on Twitch TV. Or if you want to join the Discord, you can do so as well too there. Um, but there you go, guys. I hope you are enjoying the tutorials now. I will catch you guys next time where we continue our way through springtime um, and on to our next adventure, which will be... Uh, an even harder uh, boss fight than the deer club. So once again, guys, I stream every day on Twitch TV. If you guys want to watch me there, it's all fun and games uh, TV on Twitch. So if you guys want to look on my comments there, you, or sorry, on my description there, you can see the link there. Um, hopefully you guys are having an excellent time and enjoying Don't Starve Together. And once again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hope you guys had a good one. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, everyone.